Thank you, Lord. Visit Sunday. I just had a moment right there. That God would trust us, Tiki, with such a heavy weight, such a heavy responsibility. I understand why Solomon champ asked for wisdom to lead God's people. I pray that prayer every day, all day. Lord, give me the wisdom to lead your people. Y'all make sure y'all pray for Pastor and First Lady. We have a tall order. Y'all lives and destiny depend on us. As we go, you go, believe that or not. So make sure that you continue to pray for your pastors. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to go through these slides. If you can put the first slide on the screen right there. Of course, I am uh, Lawrence, and my wife is Nichelle Peoples, the senior pastors of Going Home for Christ Church. For those that shouted and those that really know and been around the Going Home for Christ family, know that the woman of God is a woman of few words but full of power. And I thank God for my wife. I think uh, it's coming up on 32 years with my wife. 32 years, my God. Met my wife when I was 17. I'm 49 years old. My only two kids is by my wife. And I love my wife. Amen. And it's all good in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. So we are the senior pastors, of course, of going off at Christ Church. And I thank God for my wife, as I stated before. The next slide, let's look at this mission. I'm gonna take my time and show this right here. The mission, I need all of us that support this family and those that may be looking online as I take my time and share with you who we are and what we're about. Because many is watching online and some are here and you wonder why these people be screaming and shouting and they be falling all out and all that to alt and all that. Well, we're gonna get to that. I'm gonna put some, some substance to why you see, my God, if you don't already know why God's people uh, uh, Worship him. Thank you, Holy Ghost, at the level that they worship him. Because what you're seeing is just worship everything, my God, every tour, uh, all the screaming and all that. And even though it's the altar, it ain't always because somebody's in sin or somebody going through sickness and hell. Come on, somebody. I know my babies in here. Some people just grateful. Is anybody grateful for God in the place? Oh, my God. Huh? Oh, my God. Pull it back. Pull it back. Pull it back, Juju. Oh my God, but our mission, this is our mission right here at Going Home for Christ Church. And all this is on our web page, so I want to encourage you to go to our web page. It is to equip individuals with tools to advance God's kingdom. And it's a church. It's not to advance Going Home for Christ Church. It's to advance God's kingdom in the community and beyond. What Pastor Madeline did not share with y'all, she forgot because she had a moment. And I'm going to continue to work that against her. Because <laughs> they know you get up here with a plan and then all of a sudden your plan goes out the window. But what she did not tell y'all that, that I stand, uh, uh, that I'm excited about is that the church across the street, the Lutheran Church, my God has partnered with Going Home for Christ Church. They providing backpacks, school supplies, they're bringing a tent. We are affecting the community. We are affecting the community at this church. I don't know about nobody, I'm talking about this church. Yeah, yeah, so we are reached across the street and now the, the Lutheran church, my God, my God, who I give God the glory, I met their pastor, has agreed to partner with us. I'm so excited, oh my God, about that. They are so excited. They said, man, we've been waiting. Destiny, destiny, thank you, Holy Ghost. They told the woman of God, destiny, we've been waiting to get involved with something like this. That's why God brought us to 205 South Shirt. Oh my God, so we can touch the community, little one, yeah? Yeah, 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 I thank God. Going off for Christ in the Lutheran church is going to be partnering together. My God. And so our mission is to equip, as I said, individuals, that's you and I, with tools. My God, it's all kind of tools. God don't always use a hammer. He don't always use an axe. He don't always use a screwdriver. He use whatever tool. You are a tool in God's hand. Oh, my God. So it's our job as a church to equip you. 
My God, our vision is therefore go and make. Matthew 28, 19, therefore go. That means you got to be moving and make disciples, not Christians, because a true Christian will become a true disciple. Okay? And so of all nations, that means you can't be prejudiced. You can't pick and choose who you fellowship with and who you allow God to allow you to speak to. I'm going to keep it on the down line. Uh, you know, it's all in the body of Christ everywhere. Some people don't want to associate our fellowship with nobody lest they part of their denomination or part of their race. That devil is a lie. That is not Bible. My God. But he told the disciples to therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. As I stated to the, the new members class, these was Jesus' last uh, words, per, per se, to the disciples. He called the twelve together, Tanya, and said, I need y'all to join with my mission. This is not your mission. This is God's mission. My God, the great co-mission is God's mission, and he's asking the church, you and I, as individuals, my God, and disciples to join with his mission, and God's mission is what? To seek and save that which is lost. And when you get them saved, transform them into disciples, not church goers. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. See what I'm trying to say? That's the problem in the church. You got church goers and not disciples. Because disciples make other disciples. And them disciples make other disciples. And them disciples make others. That's how you advance God's kingdom. One disciple at a time. He didn't say go to all nations and make Christians. Because a true disciple will become a true Christian. Come on somebody. And a true Christian will go out and reproduce himself. Somebody give God a hand Christ-like, Christian, Christ-like. My God, a true Christian will have some Christ-like characteristics. Uh, people will be able to point out some things in you. People will be able to recognize some gifts, some talents, some things about you that they may have heard, that they may have read in the Bible. Say, so you know what? You got some Christian traits. You got some Christian character. You got some Christian, uh, some, 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 you just so kind. You just, you just a good listener. You just so long-suffering. People are watching you, you don't even know they're watching you. We all possess some good characteristics and we should always be on display. You and I should always have our hands to me and say, God, who am I? Use me. The only people that don't have their hands up saying, God, who am I? Use me is people who don't want to be used. Uh, people who know they ain't living what they profess to be. Are people who struggle with self-image, self-esteem, and you disqualify yourself because you feel like that you're not ready. And some of us, everybody has the potential to help somebody. I don't care what you're struggling with. I don't care where you and I are struggling with. The areas that you are free in, use that area to help somebody. The thing that you know that no longer master you and control you, that's the area that God wants to use to help somebody else. So everybody sitting in this church, my God, is free from something. If you smoke cigarettes one time before and you no longer smoke cigarettes, you can help somebody overcome cigarette addiction. Why? Because you smoked cigarettes before. It's that simple, my God. Oh, my God, if you used to, my God, uh, 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 let me leave. Uh, but everybody's qualified to help somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, you qualified. Come on, look at your name and say, you qualified? Oh, my God, my God. And so that is our mission and that is our vision. And then the next slide, let's talk about the discipleship process. You're going to like this, my God, because everything is a process. As I've been preaching, my God, when God uh, uh, let God put his hands on you, and I told you, my God, that God created your destiny, then he came back over here, my God, and created you for your destiny. But that's a process. In order, my God, after you and I came out of our mother's womb, we had to make take some steps towards our destiny. Process, process, everything is process. Everything is process. Don't get tired of the process. Process. Don't abort the process. Don't quit on the process because your process is taking you to your next. In order to reach your next, my God, you got to go through a process to get to your next. There's a process, my God, even towards healing. There's a process even towards deliverance. Some things God do immediately. Other things God takes you on a journey. Because some people need to see that you had to walk at your deliverance. You had to walk at your healing. Come on, somebody. And others that he delivered instantly. Like he delivered me from drugs instantly in the penitentiary. But others, my God, he allowed you to have some ups and downs, some struggles and so forth. My God, because people need to see, my God, and know your story. Because they can say, I watch you struggling. I watch you up and down. I watch you. For, for, sometimes you was okay. Sometimes you wasn't. But at the end of the day, you stayed in the process. And now you clean it over 10 years. I know it can be done because I watch you do it. Somebody give God a hand. Process. Oh, we don't understand the power of process. We want everything quickly, my God, but there's a process. Even popcorn got to go through a process. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. 
Oh, somebody need to catch that. I'm preaching right now, baby. I promise you, because you bo- you didn't bored at the process. You didn't got frustrated with the process. Oh, you didn't quit growing. You didn't quit reading. You didn't quit coming. You didn't quit praying. Oh my God, you tell yourself prayer don't work and so forth. It's the process. As Minister, Matt, um, as Minister Antoinette told the, the class this morning, my God, even if you got to start out with five minutes of prayer, my God, you just keep on praying. Oh, my God, the more you get to know somebody, the more you want to talk to them. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. So you might start out with five minutes, but, oh, I need to talk to them 10 minutes now. In 15 minutes, in 20 minutes, that's talking to God. Come on. You might have started out with two minutes before you know if you keep going through the process. Now it's 15 minutes. Then it's an hour. You look up, you're two or three hours in your prayer closet, but it started with a process. Nobody has arrived. It's a whole lot of people standing up here with me. It's a whole lot of people standing up here with me, I promise you. I'm not up here by myself. It's a whole lot of people up here. And it's a whole lot of people, my God. Me, Pastor Teddy, me and you just didn't arrive. Frank Shutter, we just didn't arrive. Pastor Mellon, y'all Shan, we just didn't arrive. There's a whole lot of people that God has brought into our life to impact our life. It's called process. Oh, I'll hammer that right there. I'm going to get off of it now. But I need y'all to understand, don't abort the process. Because when you step up out of the process, you hurt yourself. And then, my God, you hurt the people that need you to be in your process. Because on your way in your process, there's people that God going to connect you to on your way to your process. And so if you're not in your process, then you gonna, that person is supposed to meet you not there. Some of y'all, God got people that's assigned to your purpose and your destiny that's waiting on you to get to a certain place. And when you get there, they're going to bless you. But you keep going backwards. That's why you... That's why you got to stay in the process so God can bless you. My God, the blessing is in the process. The blessing ain't in going back. The blessing is in the process. Boy, Lord, I'm trying. I'm trying. Mm. As I've always said, I tell it when I was on TV and I told it wherever I go, I tell it. Church did not help me change my life. Discipleship did. Church did not help me change my life. Coming to church, if all I had to do when I came out of prison in 1998 was go to church, I don't think I would be saved today. My God, discipleship. I thank God that Bishop Gary McIntosh shipped at Greenwood Christian Center and implemented the process of discipleship because discipleship taught me about me. It taught me how to take the principles of the word of God and apply them into my day-to-day life. Many of us don't read because we don't believe that it works. Oh, but I heard her tell you it do work. And so discipleship, my God, I am a raving fan for that discipleship because first of all, Jesus told the disciples that what he wanted them to do and I've witnessed it and worked in my own life and I've seen so many people, lives transformed. Pastor Champ leaned over on me, my God, with Pastor Matt was up here and told me, Pastor, boy, you're doing a good job of making disciples. There's a whole lot of disciples around her. My God, how do you want to be remembered? For all of us that go to church, who life is you impacting? Because your influence is, is helping somebody either good or bad. Either way, whether you like it or not, you are influencing somebody either good or you influencing somebody bad. That's why you got to be careful what you got out there on social media, Christians. And so in the discipleship process here at Going Off of Christ Church, my God, this is what you're supposed to do. My God, oh my God, it, great, it brings great significance and substance to your life when God saved you. And then he take you through the process of Romans 12, 1, transforming your mind. And when you see God do some things in your life, my God, you get to a point mentally, spiritually, and even physically where you start looking for an opportunity to be a blessing to somebody else. And so what the purpose of the process is to win. See that? You win. After you win somebody to Christ, it's my job, come on, Pastor, to connect. That don't mean everything I talk about is Jesus. How about just going out and lift some weights? How about just going out and walking to the fortune port? You know what I'm trying to say? So after you win somebody to Christ, this is a, it's a, this is a system that God did. This is our Bible. After you lead somebody to Christ, then you have to form a connection with them. As we taught in class, after a person come down here at church, and everybody, and you give your life to Christ, and you say the sinner's prayer, this process right here deals with the now what? I'm saved, now what? I done came down here, I done responded to you, what God said to you, Pastor, now what you gonna do to help me? Right here? I didn't want you to Christ, and now it's my job to connect with you. So where I will connect with you, and I will connect with you in classes, but also I will connect with you by spending time with you as my schedule permit. But after you win somebody to Christ, you are supposed to connect with them, and then you, after you be connect with them, then you begin the discipleship process in their life. And for everybody, things look different. 
Every disciple, you don't have to disciple the same way, my God. And so you start the discipleship process in their life. You do, that's Jesus told them, join my mission. Jesus was telling the 12, my God, in Matthew 28, 19, I need you to go back and do the exact same thing I did in your life. He spent every day with the disciples, every moment he could with the disciples. He fed them. They watch him heal people. They watch him feed people. They watch him do all of his ministry, my God, because God knew that he was only going to be here for a short time, so he had to reproduce himself. He had to reproduce himself. He had to reproduce himself. That's another thing about a disciple and a disciple maker. A disciple, I am, will reproduce himself in other men. And even other women, come on, so that they can turn, go out and reproduce themselves. Come on, somebody, and other people. This is how you advance God's kingdom. So after you win somebody to Christ, you need to take time to connect with them. Don't be so excited just because you led somebody to Christ. See them all the way through the process. But let me bring some balance to that because one plant and one water. Sister Tiffany, I saw that post you planted. God going to get an increase on that woman of God. And so you got to know your part because you can get in the way of the discipleship process because you smothering and you mm, leave them alone. Let God do it. You led them to Christ, my God. Connect with them and let God disciple them. That's why you got to be led when you did because you could be too much. You could be overbearing. You could be involved too much. There's some things that you can't, that they got to go through, they got to learn. Get out God's way. My God, that's one of the things I had to learn. Get out of his way and let people go through what they got to go through because they have to go through stuff to develop. And then after you get a disciple healthy enough and strong enough and secure enough, I mean, you don't have to be perfect because none of us is perfect. But after you get a disciple strong enough where they reading every day, they praying, their lifestyle has been transformed. Uh, they don't mean they don't make no mistakes, but they're much, 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 much better than when you first got them. And after that, take, then you take them out and say, you know what? Now it's time for you, champ, to go do the same thing I just done for you. But see, what I found out is the man of God taught me, my God, a lot of people, this take work. See, this is get you out of yourself and get you concerned about God's vision, God's purpose, God's agenda. And some of y'all say, I don't want to take time. I don't want to deal with girls. I don't want to deal with men. I, you know, all that type. See, you already disqualify yourself. What if God would have told you that? What if God would say, I don't want to deal with you. I don't want to crawl to Calvary. I don't want to die for you. What if God would have told you that? What if God would have excluded you from the family? What if he said, I'm dying for everybody but you? You're the only one I'm going to leave out. Since you don't love my people, my God, I'm going to leave you out. You don't get a chance to come to heaven. You're going on your way to it. Uh, come on. Yeah. See, we got to think like that. But I promise you, when you get into the discipleship process and start looking for opportunities to win people to Christ and connect with people, my God, because that's influence. My God, life has a different meaning. When you're helping people in the midst of what they're going through, you forget about the stuff you're going through. Yeah, and you look up, yeah. God, it took care of it. When you take yeah. care of God's business, God is bound to take care of your business. Yeah, yeah. Some of the stuff that you're worrying about right now, you know why you're worrying? Because you ain't doing nothing. Oh, my God. You know why you're all stressed out? Because you ain't doing nothing. Uh, your life is all about you. It's all about what Christ wants you to do. That's why I only got three people that understand what God just said. That's why you're so overbearing and all woe down because you're all concerned about your life. You and I are consumed with your thing. When the second greatest command is to love thy neighbor, how can you say you love God and you see your neighbor suffer? The Bible says you won't even do nothing about it. You won't even feed them. You won't even give them a ride to work, my God. What Mally didn't tell you is she was on the phone talking to me when her top went, out, went on the flat. My God, I called Robin and told him to get on it. So when she pulled up, Robin was right there to me. That's kingdom right there, baby. I got you covered. Lord, don't even worry about it. I got you. Thank you, Robin and Shannon. Thank y'all. That's what a family do. She was on the phone with her pastor. When she pulled up dirty dad, he was already right there to change the tie. She didn't have to change nothing. Come on, somebody. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Tanya. That's what family do. They cover each other. Mm, mm, mm. I promise you, when you get about God's business and make God a priority, he'll make you a priority. Somebody need to catch that. Y'all heard me say that, but that need to become reality in your mind. I need to get a guy. I need to be a, I need to make God a priority. See, I know I'm strange to a lot of you, but I, be, I made God a priority April 30th of 1995, and I ain't never went back. I ain't never went back on my commitment to God. And I know it's strange. I know some of y'all don't understand it. And I know people lie on me and talk about me and misunderstand me. That's okay. Oh, my God. But uh, my, I'm going on. To see what the end of a saved life is going to be like. Because God is a priority. Oh my God. God is a priority. And when you make God a priority, guess what? You got to make his people a priority. Because the, the kingdom is about his people. So that's the discipleship progress. I mean process right there. Are y'all with me so far? So you win somebody. You connect with them. You got time. 
What if God told you he had time to connect with you? You're too busy. That's because your life ain't prioritized. So you win, connect, and you disciple. Disciple is hard, though, because you got a lot of people who don't want it. I found that out, too, in the vision. When you, God started hitting that cavity, when God, Minister Larry, started hitting that cavity, oh, that cavity is... They leave. Me and my wife cut off and said, my God, everybody that came through this church to join the church, we would have to have two, three, probably three services. But everybody don't want to change. Discipleship will, will, will tell me and you if you're really ready for real transformation. Because you can find an excuse to get up out the vision because you really don't want to change. And if you're okay with looking the part instead of really living and being the part, that's fine. But there's a remnant that say, I, I'm tired of faking the funk. I'm tired of playing this thing. I got to get healthy. I'm too old, my God, to be playing games, my God. The vision help you. So if you want to get that now, what? Let the vision help you. Let's talk about this right here. Men's and women's discipleship. This is something that's important. Now, let me, amen. Let me, again, I learned so much because I'm a man in authority, but I'm a man under authority. And, and Bishop told me early on, because I was a raving fan for discipleship because I seen it work so much in my life. And I had so many partners that still out there, my God, uh, uh, getting down through there. If y'all know what I'm talking about because I got my babies. And, and, but I found out, my God, that I had a lot of partners that would come to my men's meetings but they wouldn't come to church. So they would be lined up against the wall at Greenwood in the back. Someone be like this on the wall. Someone be squatted down like this in, in doing Bible study, Tanya. You know what I'm trying to say? And people would make statements, look at them gangsters. Well, my spiritual mother would always say doing encounters, my God, when people smell like cigarettes and alcohol, she'd say, they here, they here, they here. Jesus said those who are whole don't need a physician. Yes. He came to seek and say that which is lost. Come on, somebody. So they be lined up. You know, try to say some of them, they smell like weed. They doing, that's okay. But they got a mind to come to the men's discipleship, my God. Oh, my God. And God started cleaning them and God started working with them. I connected with them, my God. And I started discipling them. Come on, somebody. But God, Bishop told me that men and women will come to a men's and women's discipleship meeting. Before they would a church. Because a lot of people, their last encounter with church wasn't good. The pastor heard them. The leaders heard them. Uh, whatever. But a lot of people have. My God, That's why I tell them, when you come to going over Christ, it ain't church. We don't do church. We do Christ. And many of us right now are hurting right now and wounded right now because you came to church. You didn't come to Christ. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, he told me, invite people to the men's meeting. He told us this is another way to make disciples, connect with people. My God, because you invite them to the men's meeting because there ain't nothing but men. Or you invite them to the women's meeting because it ain't nothing but women in the meeting. And there's things that you can deal with when it's just women instead of being co-ed. Come on, somebody. And so we have this every other Monday because, again, our vision is to go here and make disciples. So you can't have a vision. You can't have a mission statement talking about equipping people and discipleship and you'll have nothing in your church to help them become the very thing you're saying that you want them to become. Like my wife always, and she's been reminding me lately, my God, redundantly, discipleship ain't one of the things we do. It is the main thing we do. And none of us, can I help you? If none of us outgrow discipleship, you never outgrow discipleship. So I want to encourage you, my God, to start coming out to the Women's Monday Night Discipleship. And I'm talking to those that has been with me for quite some time who think that you didn't graduate it. Think that you don't need it no more. But I promise you, when I pull the giving record and when I listen to the, watch the Facebook, I can tell some of you do need it. When I see the consistency, I'm going to keep it on dark and I'm pastoring and fathering at the same time. Ain't nobody have outgrown. Anytime you get to the point that you feel like you have outgrown reading your Bible, you don't need to pray no more, you're in trouble. Anytime you lose your hunger, Matthew 5 and 6, blessed is the man who hungers and thirsts after righteousness. They shall be filled. That hunger and that thirst, it's a continued thirst. It's a continued hunger. You can drink the Pacific Ocean and you're still thirsty. You can eat every McDonald's Big Mac they got in the world and you're still hungry because it's never satisfied. Anytime you lose your hunger, anytime you lose your passion, you're going to die. You got to stay hungry. And how do you stay hungry? You stay connected, my God, through the discipleship process. Mm. That's why I'm still here, Lawanya, because I I ain't never lost my hunger. 23 years later, I'm still hungry for God. How's your appetite? How's your appetite for the things of God? 
right now. You know why we tell ourselves I don't need to go to the discipleship on Monday night? Uh, I'm just wasting time. But when you're not there, look at what you're doing. Watch the TV. Men over somewhere you ain't supposed to be. Looking at what we do at going on for Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. My wife didn't say nothing, but I felt her. When you connect to see, you ain't got to say nothing, Tori. I can't get no money. Mama Donna, come on. We have Monday night discipleship every other Monday. It won't be tomorrow. It'll be next Monday if the Lord delays coming. Please, some of you sisters and brothers, even if you cannot make it because your work schedule or for whatever excuse you may have, tell somebody else, though. Say, look at her. This is your church. If you're a member, this is your church. Why you won't promote your church? You will promote everything in the club. Why you won't promote this? And so even if you don't make it, tell say, sister, you, I can't make it. I got to go to work. But I'm telling you, you need to go check out these men. And some of y'all got young niece, young nieces and nephews that's 16 years and up. Y'all know what they're dealing with. You know what your family's dealing with. Pick them up and bring them. Don't complain about your family and loved ones when you won't do what it takes to help them. Be a vehicle to help somebody. And so I want you to encourage. I want some of you men that I see on Sundays. Uh, if you're not at work on Mondays, uh, next Monday, please come out and bring somebody with you. Bring your nephew that's get, still out there in the streets. Bring your niece, my, your women that's still out there, my God, going hard, no one to listen and stuff like that. Because God got a key. All it takes is one moment in his presence and God can change a man's or woman's life. Get them to God. That's your job, to get them to God. If you go to church every Sunday, who are you using your car to bring to church? Mm. So I want to encourage you to come out to the men's and women's discipleship. Get on fire about it. If you can't come, tell somebody about going. Somebody give God a hand. And then we move to the kingdom foundations. This is something that we added, I think, last year, maybe year before last. Amen. We have several students. All my kingdom foundation students, if you're here, stand up. If you're in kingdom foundations right now. Look at all that number right there. Amen. Amen. What we found out, like Bishop taught us, he taught me so much. Uh, keep your spiritual father intact, son. Don't let my voice never not matter. Never let your pastor's voice not matter. He taught me, you cannot disciple, son, broken people. Because the disciple's job is to go out and help other people. You got to get the people healthy in the church, man. And you do that through the discipleship program. So you got to have something laid out for them so they can begin to get healthy. To understand, my God, the foundational things of Christianity. And that's what Kingdom Foundation is all about. It teaches you the importance of tithing. It teaches you the importance of reading your Bible. It teaches you all about communion and baptism. A lot of people in churches all over the nation, my God, does. They get involved in a lot of stuff and don't even know what it stands for and what it means. They just doing it because that's what they do at their church. How do you know it's Bible? We don't have a lot of things we do, but what we do do is Bible. And we got scripture on these slides that's going to show you. Everything is biblical. And so Kingdom Foundation is a, a very important class. The purpose of this course is to teach the basic principles of kingdom living. This is where your discipleship journey begins. This is where your discipleship journey begins. How is you going to go through discipleship one, which is where I'm going next, and you, don't, you struggle now? See, this helps you get basic principles and tools like reading your Bible. Some of us struggle with reading our word. Some of us, can I be honest, I'm not against the Bible being read to you, but some of us don't read our Bible because we're lazy, so we want somebody else to read it to us. You can, and I can, get revelation from somebody reading it to you, but I promise you, when you flip them pages... When you open that book yourself, God will speak to you at a different level. God will talk to you. You'll be like, oh, my God, oh, yeah. See, see, because when you're driving, you're distracted. <laughs> oh, my God, when you're listening to somebody else, my God, read the Bible to you, you ain't really tuned in like you're supposed to. But when you got that constitution open up in your face, my God, and you, everything is shut off around you, God can speak to you, my God. And so, so don't be lazy. <laughs> uh, I know if you got a busy life, my God, and, and you didn't get to read your word this morning, and you throw something on, the Bible, something on, or something on, that's different. But don't make it a habit where you never depend and open up God's word. You're dependent on audio. What you going to do if you ain't got no phone? What you going to do if the internet break down? 
Don't you know that stuff that you building on? My God, the internet ain't gonna always be here. I promise you, but I bet you that Bible will. Yeah, yeah, girl. yeah, 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 sure, yeah, yeah. What you gonna do when you ain't got no internet? So, so my internet don't work, my God. I thought you paid the bill, Pastor Terry. I thought you paid the bill. Yeah, now you got fights at home between husband and wife. Yeah, because I can't read my Bible because the internet cut off. What you gonna do? I ain't got no internet, so now I don't read. Because you done got into a routine of reading, looking, leading somebody else to read for you. What am I trying to say? You cannot understand kingdom principles. You cannot develop at the level you need to develop without having day-to-day -day contact with God's word. Yeah, yeah. Many of us is trying to grow as Christians and we want a better life as Christians, but we don't read. How do you know how to operate? How do you know what's God and what ain't God if you're not reading? How can you help somebody else if you don't have no knowledge? So when somebody uh, 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 asks you a question about the scripture, if you don't know, say, I'm going to get back with you. If you don't know, you don't know. It's a whole lot of things I don't know. You know what I mean? If you don't know, you don't know. But don't disqualify yourself because you don't take time to read. Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. And Kingdom Foundation prepares you for that. I need my class one more time to stand up. Stand up, Kingdom Foundation. That's a good looking class right there. Amen. Yes, Lord. So we still making disciples over it. Then after you come through the kingdom foundation, then you move to discipleship one. Uh, the missing ingredient. My spiritual father's brother, Ron McIntosh, wrote a book called The Greatest Secret. This is an extended version of that. My God, but as I put on there, my God, whoever gets the mind gets the life. Ask yourself right now, my God, at whatever time it is, my God, who really got your mind? Because whoever get the mind get the life. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. So if God don't got your mind, he really ain't got your life. Amen. To my married couples, if she don't got my mind, then another woman will have my mind. If she ain't got your mind, then another man will have her mind. It's that I'm, I'm making it where you can feel it. So whoever get the mind, get the life. So ask yourself, Christians, who really got your mind? Because the Bible says, we quoted Romans 12, 1, you be transformed by the renewal of your mind. How can you transform without reading? See, it goes right back to kingdom foundation. You cross over from a butterfly to a caterpillar, I mean from a caterpillar to a butterfly, by the transforming of your mind. So if you're not reading, my God, how do you expect for your mind to transform? A lot of our wounds, a lot of our scars, my God, is in our thinking. A lot of our lives is out of order, my God, and out of balance. I'm not criticizing nobody, my God. I'm trying to get you to understand. You get the mind fixed, you get your life fixed. I had an addiction, a stone cold drug addiction. When God saved me, he began the process of changing my mind. So what five treatment centers couldn't do, when God transformed my mind, what they couldn't do, God did immediately. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. So a lot of your habits, a lot of your hangups, a lot of your problems is in your mind. It ain't the devil, it's your thinking. Oh, excuse my passion, but I'm going to keep it on a dollar. A lot of you are blaming everybody for your mental, but it's you. Because you won't let God renew your mind. The mission ingredient is 12 weeks. It deals with the mind. Transforming the mind. The Bible says it's with the mind that you and I serve God. So if your mind ain't pointed towards kingdom, you won't try to pursue kingdom. It's with the mind that you serve God. Your mind told you to come to church. Your man can tell you, okay, he's te he teaches you too long. I want to hear that. Just get up and leave. That's how powerful the man is. So whoever get the mind, get the life. That's 12 weeks after you come through the kingdom foundation. After we come through the uh, our encounter in September, our next wave of classes for Kingdom Foundation will be starting. The Kingdom Foundation students that stood up, my God, they're going right on into discipleship. One, we're getting in the vision. I ain't never get out to visit. I've been going through what I'm teaching y'all since 2003. This is 2019. And if the Lord delays last come, it's going to be 2020. And I ain't never got up out to vision. Don't never stop investing in yourself. The late Dr. Miles Rose said, don't ever put a dollar amount on your soul. If it's a book, my God, that you see at Walmart or Mardell's and it speak to you bad, don't go eat up your destiny. I'm going to keep this 20 hours because I want to give me some Chick-fil-A. I want me some, ooh, they got that new bomb shrimp fried rice, my God. You know, and so you eat up your destiny. You eat up your healing. You eat up your deliverance, my God, for the flesh. Never put a dollar amount on your soul. Thank you. 
Your priority has to do with the way you point your mind and the way you focus your mind. Whatever you focus on the longest becomes the strongest. Whatever you focus on, if the kingdom at your focus, it won't become the strongest in your life. Them are some of the principles. Then you got to renovate. He talks about renovate. Think about when you go and buy a house. You go in there and you, you gut it. You renovate it. Some, we got, got to go up into the attic of our mind and renovate our mind. We got so much stuff. Think about an attic. That's where you put stuff that you don't need, you don't, you don't want no more. It's seasonal. Ooh, how about she kid no more? Seasonal stuff like Christmas decorations and different stuff that you store in the attic. But sooner or later, you got to allow the spirit of the living God to go up into the attic of your mind and pull down that stuff. Oh, just cause it, just cause you don't deal with it, don't mean it ain't gonna affect you somewhere later. Oh my God, see this is stuff I learned going through the vision. You can hide it, you can put it away for a season, but God gonna require it of you. He gonna say, go up into the daddy, climb up there and get that because I need to deal with that because where I'm taking you, I can't let you have that. That right there will stop you. Come on, somebody. And it deals with your self-esteem and your self-image, my God. The healthier you get, my God, when you see yourself different, you act different. Some of y'all ladies, your self-esteem, you look so good, I'm gonna keep it on the dollar. You dress it up real, real good. Oh, but you're weak when it comes to your self-image and your self-esteem. You let people mishandle you, my God. You let people mistreat you, my God. When you're confident in yourself as a woman, oh, your self-esteem and self-confidence is right. You won't let anybody do anything to you. You can't let no man mishandle you. You won't let no man dog you. You won't let no man misuse you when you know who you are, God. That's what the greatest secret do. It deals your mind. Some of y'all, y'all just accept anything. The enemy has beat you up and told you what you ain't. Everybody gonna like you too big, you too skinny, you got too many kids. You ain't got uh, your, your teeth missing, all that stuff. You just let the enemy just beat you to death. Rise up, my God, and be kings and queens that you are. The devil is alive. This is the type of stuff we learn and teach at Going Home for Christ Church. And I teach it just like that. You are somebody. You're fearfully and wonderfully, man. It's the book saying. And discipleship too is understanding your potential. Every one of you got potential. Every one of you got potential. I didn't know I was called to do this. I didn't. I was just glad to be free and glad to not be struggling. I walked, I asked the class, just told the class this morning, uh, I, I walked into my calling. I didn't go searching for no office of no pastor. Wasn't thinking about pastoring. What, I was cool where I was at. Bishop tried to talk me out of pastoring three times, he told the church. I tried to talk him out three times. Are you sure you want to be a pastor? Oh, I said, I got to go for it. I, yes, I do. If he asked me that again, I'd tell him I'm done. It's a lot of work. I say that, but I don't know. Because I'm like the disciples, y'all. I'm moving. I'm really like the disciples, y'all. To whom shall I go? You have the words. Dirty dies, look at me, men of God. To whom shall we go, man? Yeah, yeah. What are we gonna go back to, Lando? What? Think about this. Think about the stuff, God. Come on. Come on. They was all turning away from Jesus. And he looked to his twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, Where you gonna go? Where you gonna go? Where you gonna go? Where you gonna go? He looked to the disciples. He said, Where you gonna go? Everybody deserted me, because he was speaking truth. So he turned to his 12, said, would you leave too? And Peter said, to whom shall I go? You have the words of eternal life. And you open that Bible, my God, that's life. You gonna go back to Egypt? What do the club got to offer you? What do smoking weed got to offer you? What do drinking, what, all that stuff that God brought you out of, how's that gonna help you? That's what drove you to the church. Why are you gonna go back to it? Because you don't understand your potential. When you don't understand your potential, you join yourself with anything and anybody. When you understand your potential, your potential, you live a focused life. You don't waste time on chicken stuff. When you understand your potential, I want you to know behind all your mistakes and my mistakes, there's something in you that God needs. God, you know what? You got to help. You got to discover that stuff inside of you. It's called gifts and talents and resources that's laying dormant. Ask yourself, have you ever thought, man, I wonder what am I really called to do? Pastor said, I got stuff inside of me. It's stuff laying inside of you and even me. God ain't through with me because I have a church. There's still a whole lot more in me that he ain't even revealed to me because it ain't time yet. I ask yourself, do you have enough hunger? Are, are you desperate enough to say, you know, God, why did I make it? What? what, what? Mm. Why did we make it? Ah, uh, why? Because.
because God has something in you. Thank you, Holy Ghost, that the world needs. So you couldn't die because you ain't done what he told you to do. That's what understanding your potential help you to realize. And then you start living a more focused life. Love yourself enough to find out why you're here. And then once God reveals it to you, serve it to the world. Let's go on to number three. Spirit, spirit of discipleship. We, we usually use the spirit of leadership from Dr. Mao, but I'm shifting. I'm even shifting to, 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 to John Maxwell, finding the leader within. But this is leadership. All these classes, 12 weeks. This right here is the development, uh, spirit of leadership. Uh, the key to development. Uh, when you, attitude separates a leader from a follower, okay? And, and when you discover you, purpose and potential, see, they build one point another. They start with your mind, then God still revealing your purpose to you, and then he takes you to spirit of leadership. Every one of you are gifted with leadership. You just have to discover it. When you discover the leader within, you discover you. Leadership is self-discovery. The more you learn about you, the more you discover yourself. That's what the said. See, it taught me more than church, Mr. Larry. The more I learned about me, the more I learned about myself. That's good and bad. When, you, when you're in leadership, you got to learn about you. You are leaders. So why are you living beneath who you are? When your mind changes, you operate in purpose, you serve your leadership spirit to the world. See, you live a different type of life, baby, when you're functioning, when those things are working like that. When that discipleship is working like that in your life, you can do a whole lot of church. They doing it ever all across the world, but broken. Ain't getting healthy. Ain't progressing. Ain't advancing God's kingdom. Gifted. Gifted with no focus. Gifted with no point of reference. Gifted but bound up. Using worship on one Sundays and drinking alcohol and smoking dope on Tuesday. Gifted with no focus. Gifted with no purpose. I ain't talking about your gifts. I'm talking about your purpose, your focus, your mind, priority. Prioritize your life. Let make God a priority and he'll make you a priority. I'm saying this because we need to hear this. Don't rest on your gifts if your gifts are contaminated. Get healthy. And I'm talking to me as I'm talking to y'all. Let's move forward. Let's look at the department coordinators. I'm moving quickly. A department coordinator is someone who is, provides direction instruction and guidance to a group of individuals for the purpose of achieving a common goal that helps fulfill the vision of the house. And so as I call your name, I'm gonna ask that you come, department coordinators, so they can put a face with you. This is how we govern going off of Christ church. Can I help you understand something? Let me say this before you start judging, before you start casting your vote. As I stated earlier, when you find a perfect church, show me. When you find a perfect pastor and first lady, show me. When you find perfect leaders in that church, show me. I got about 100,000 I can give to it. Seriously. When you find a perfect church, a perfect pastor, a perfect leadership, show me. I got about a meal to 100,000 I can sow into it. Y'all catch that? When you find it. When you find a, 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 a first lady that's perfect, that she ain't got no flaws. When you find a pastor, my God, uh, I guarantee you, if you go sit in the party house and listen to TDJ, she'll tell you, I got some things I'm still working on. Uh, when you find a perfect leadership, show me. Show me. Usually the church body wants to be entertained. They don't want to be discipled. Because you got to pay a price to be free. You ain't got to pay no price to be entertained on Sunday for an hour. Get them out. I got another service. Get them out. I got another service. Keep them coming because I need this money to come in. Come on. Come on. Entertained. We don't entertain. We make disciples. They're going on for Christ church, baby. Mm hmm Yeah. And so in saying that, in saying that, in saying that, my God, we're all a mess on our way to progress. So these are some of the department coordinators that, is out, that was in uh, orientation this morning that, my God, that me and my wife has found faithful. They have showed themselves loyal. When we first started, we didn't have what we have today. We come, we come through a series of attacks. The enemy tried to destroy way back then, but we have outlasted the attacks. Uh, God is still blessing in six years. Come on, give God a hand. Give God a hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, 
Uh, I just want some of y'all to understand as I move forward. Uh, don't forget, as I told my leaders that was here this morning, don't forget what you was and what you were struggling with when you came to the church. Now that you didn't got on the other side, all of a sudden now, you know, you know, you know, now you don't appreciate, thank you, the ghost, or value uh, uh, the ministry like you once did. But when you was broke down, huh? oh my God, when your husband wasn't in the bed, which he was somewhere else, my God, you, you was at church every Sunday. I'm going to keep it on the dollar. My God, when your wife didn't walk out on you, my God, me and my God, you showed up every Sunday and every Monday and Wednesday and everything in between, my God. Don't forget about what the church, giving God the glory, has done for you. See, we do that. We forget with the church, whatever church you go to, whatever church you come from. Some of us have forgotten how good the church and the people in the church, because it ain't the building, it's you. Some of you have forgotten how good those people was to you Amen. and how they work with you. They paid your rent. They did this. They kept your lights on, my God. Oh, they did all kind of stuff for you. How soon we forget how good God's people is to us, but have one thing they do wrong. My God, I'm sorry, but it is what it is. I'm pastoring and father in a church. Somebody give God a hand as I move. This is the organizational chart. I'm not going to mess with it. Put the organizational chart up there for me, daughter. Uh, you see I'm up top. Then you got my secretary, my God, Kimberly. My God, who can I tell y'all that it's not perfect? Yes, he has made some mistakes. Yes, he has offended some of y'all. Yes, he might didn't say something right at the time, but at the end of the day, I promise you as I stand on this pulpit, it ain't nothing if that woman can do that she won't do for you to help you. I know you don't like it, but I promise you, she got a heart of gold. And she will do anything she can to help any one of y'all. She's not perfect and neither are you, Mr. Judge Mento. And so then you have the leadership, and I'm not going to mess with that. My God, uh, uh, up under there, I'm going to call their names, and this is going to this is going to display. I felt led to say that because I understand what it is. You got to understand, a woman of God got a tough job, and she's growing into her position. She come out the world just like you come out the world. Again, when you find the perfect secretary, show me. I'm going to replace Kim with her. But then I'm going to turn right around and bring Kim back because Kim probably more loyal and faithful to her than she is. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Yeah. See, you can't just write people off that's been loyal to you. But you don't allow people to hinder what you're called to do, but you don't just write people off. See, some of y'all, you don't value nobody. That's why your life is miserable. Pastor. Let me reword that. Some of you, my God, don't understand the people that you wrote off, God brought in your life to influence you and to help you. Because they did one or two things wrong, you didn't turn your back on them. Now you stuck in Egypt when you should have been free. Because you don't know how to communicate and, and bring stuff together. Jesus said offenses may come. My offenses may come. He warned the church. That's going to happen. Get it and throw it off. Deal with it quickly. Get it up off it because the enemy's trying to destroy the relationship. Some of you can't move forward because you're so bitter. Benevolence. Cynthia Fields, come. And you can just stand right down here, Miss Cynthia. But I thank God, and I know time is at hand, but Miss Cynthia is over benevolence. She has been found faithful. So if you feel like that you're called to deal with sick and shut in and you want to help out, my God, with uh, uh, going to uh, deal with people in their bereavement time and so forth, my God, Miss Cynthia, I promise you, this woman right here is a seasoned woman. Yeah. Yeah. And I promise you, she is not messy. No. And she knows how to conduct herself as a lady. Yeah. Yeah. This one right here, if you know her story, uh, Kendall B. Jackson, discipleship coordinator. Y'all just bear with me because I want to give y'all a little understanding because Kendall reminds me a lot of Janice. Kendall was one of those Christians like some of us. I'm going to say, oh, because I want nobody to think I'm throwing those stones. They grow up in church. I'm going to show you how powerful discipleship is and what I've been talking about. Because she's a, she is a true, true yes. product. Not a buy, but a product 
of everything that this church stands for. This girl been in church all of her life and she'll tell you, when she got out of church, her blunt was in the ashtray in the church parking lot. Before she get out of the church parking lot, after she sat in the house of the Lord, before she left the parking lot, the blunt was lit up. What no holiness. What no holiness. What no keeping herself. What none of that in the church house. Selling dope, smoking dope, selling dope, smoking dope. Everything under the sun. But when she came to going home for Christ's church because of her brother, Grant, she try to say, and she got into the discipleship uh, program and got up on the minister Janice. My God, and Janice taught the woman to God how to be a woman, yeah. not a church goer. Yeah. She been set free and delivered and going home for God. And oh my God, she has been my uh, cause she's not like me. But I thank God for you talking about loyalty at the highest she is. But she been set free. See, everybody got a story. Everybody got a story because some of y'all right now has justified you ain't got no medical cord but you still smoke weed. So therefore to you, my God, your motive is wrong but if you got a medical cord, God bless you. But this is about her, my God, didn't have no medical cord and she was doing church until she came in my life and she started doing Christ. Now she's been set free for many years because of discipleship, not church. Oh, I want the audience to feel it. Is she perfect now? No, she make mistakes. Matter of fact, me and her and the wife just had to have a meeting the other day. I'm just saying. But I thank God for her loyalty. She's working it out just like you trying to work it out. Oh, Lord, don't pay me no mind. And this is right here. Say what you will. Say what you will. Thank what you want to thank. I can't even call him a squirrel from Delaware no more. He become an alpha male, Barry. He's trying to get like me and you, man of God. Let's give God a glory for Pastor Dean, my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, Lord. That's my guy right there, Barry. Yeah, 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 yeah. He gets you done. For real, B. For real. Yeah, that one right there gets you done. He is a true blessing. And boy, don't he get the filth. Because I make some feeling. If you <laughs> uh, but I thank God for you, son. I thank God for you, man of God. I thank God for you. I thank God for you. I thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. And he'll be giving you some information in the upper coming days when the Lord put it on his heart. Is he perfect? now? But as many things, my God, and sacrifices he have made for us to be doing what we're doing today. I can assure you, all my leaders, look at me. That man has been a major, major, major blessing to everything that's going on inside of this church. Yes, he has. I thank God for him. Game time youth pastor. Game time as my wife made sure we understood that God and me every day. God and me every day. So when you hear game time, that's our youth ministry. God and me. We're trying to instruct and teach our kids that you can be God, you can be cool and what Jordans and all that stuff every day. You can be cool at school and so forth. Because many kids, they come to church, but when they go home, when they go to school, they, they don't want to have nothing to do with Christianity. Because it's too hard to be a Christian in school. We're trying to get them past that. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be ostracized and, out, and people looking at you wrong. Stand up for God like a Coista son do. James stands for God. Kept young man in high school. Oh, my God. So I'm thankful for you, man of God. You're blessed. Amen. Well, this is my heard. Let's give God a glory for the greeters. Mama Donna. Come on, Mama Donna. Yeah. I can't find that no one, so I'm gonna be alone. <laughs> I saw Mama Donald, y'all, uh, Mr. Larry and the kids and grandkids, y'all stand up. This is Mama Donald's family over there. Amen. 
just had a little moment thinking about Mr. Sidney. The ambassador team is set up to take care of all of our first time guests. And again, ambassador team, she gets my heart and my wife's heart. She understands that you cannot do what God has asked you to do by yourself. You need to formulate a team, the porter's team, the greeter's team. Everything needs to be team. That's the direction that this church is going. We're not trying to build an island unto ourselves. Your influence is very limited when it's just you. The greater team you have, the more influence you have. Did y'all catch that? Yeah. And so I thank God for my ambassador leaders, Minister Riley and um, Patrice Mitchell. Let's give God a hand for them. Yeah. I'm trying to move. Yo, her show is pretty. She dressed you today. She dressed you today. She know what it is. Mary, she know what it is. But see, this is my her. When she first came to church, at the other church, he too hard. So I'm, you know, I'm coming at the thing. They like, where's the pastor? This is her testimony. You know, I got. <laughs> she, she said, where the pastor? And they said, right there. They said, she said, that's the pastor. He a gangster. But I just walked like that. But let me, let, I'm going so with this. And she tried to leave. She would go sit and went away. I'm going to tell you the power of discipleship. Right. She left and went away and for a day or two, a week, however long she gone. And, and, uh, but something about the atmosphere. See, atmosphere is just powerful. Oh, see, see, you got to clean up your home, your atmosphere in your home. See, you got to make your home, my God, a tabernacle for the Spirit of God to come rest, my God. And when the Spirit of God come into your home, man of God, he'll begin to set stuff that's out of order, in order, my God. Our homes is too chaotic, my God. You got to make your home a place where the Spirit can live at. That means you got to open up the windows and get all that stuff out, all that witchcraft, all that hell, all that alcohol and drugs. Get that stuff out of your house. God can't live in your home. That's why your home just tore all up. Oh my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, she tried to leave. She tried to leave. She tried to leave. She tried to leave. But I didn't know for over 20 plus years, this man here couldn't even get out of bed because he was drunk every single day for 20 plus years. She had to bathe him. She had to do everything. He went to work. And as soon as he come home, my God, it was curtains. It's time to get it in. And so she tried to leave. Uh, but God said, don't leave, daughter, because your husband delivers his tie to that form of gangster that you try to get away from. And he's been set free and delivered over 20 plus years. That's the power of discipleship. That's the power of discipleship. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I will never stop doing it because he told the church to do it. And even Amber them gave me the microphone and he got out a little bit, didn't he, baby? <laughs> he couldn't even get out of bed, y'all. Some of y'all got husbands right now. Get him here and get him to him. Because see, I help him get free, giving God the glory, and he's prepared to help your husband or your kids. He's going to probably help my son get free from alcohol. Get your family to the church. Get them to the Monday night discipleship because he got a key to help somebody get free. But if she, amen, Sharon, he made it. But if she listened to her flesh and try to judge me, her husband, she'd be going through hell right now at home. He'd still be drunk somewhere. Boy, you better know what you're sitting up under at this church. Come on, Lawan, y'all can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Yes, Lord. But they are responsible for calling all of our first-time guests and dealing with the people of God. So if you want to be a part and you have a friendly, friendly personality, uh, there's, there, oh, yeah, yeah, I see Tiffany back there. Yes, Lord. I'm talking about friendly. And when they go to talking crazy, you don't go to talking crazy back. <laughs> come on. You got some long suffering and some temperance. <laughs> and you got a good listener. <laughs> oh, come on, somebody. You might want to hook up with them, my God. Yes, Lord. I thank God for them. But that is a very important ministry, the ambassador team. Because they called all of the first-time guests. All y'all first-time guests that stood up, you will be receiving a phone call from one of them or their team. My God. Mm. Also, too, Mama Donna at this present time is still over hospitality. But I can assure you, if you have the gift of being, watch this, faithful, because that's what she is. 
my God, and you feel like you can lead hospitality, my God, or you want to be a part of the hospitality team, come be a part of the hospitality team if you're not already, my God, and, and we, because she's always looking for her replacement. She don't need to be over hospitality and greeters, but the reason why she is, because that's very important to this church, because sometimes, my God, you get one shot with people. When you're having home goings and different things and weddings and stuff like that, my God, when you're dealing with the people outside of the community, if your stuff is raggedy, they'll be like, oh, that's a raggedy church. Yeah, people just, ugh, you don't try to say, no, no, no. She understands our heart. She know how to serve. And the people that's connected to her, they get it. They understand how you have to serve who you are. My God, that's why you got to get healthy to the people. But if you, my God, feel like, my God, you can help man that and run that, then we'll watch you. Y'all catch that? We'll watch you. And then she'll easy slide out the way. When she and my wife say it's time, we'll bring you up. But I'm looking for that person to man that. Because Mama Donna, my God, needs to be able to enjoy. So it's look at all these people in this church. Many of them joined the ministry this morning and said, I'm called to serve. I'm called to work with people, okay? See Mama Donna. Wave your hand one more time, Mama Donna. Amen. I want you activated. Oh, Kingdom Cubs. Come on, come on, Ariel. Come on up. Come on up, Ariel. And again, she stayed the course. Is she perfect? No. No, no. But I give God the glory for her, and she's teachable. Amen. She's teachable. She's teachable. And she will make right anything that she has made wrong. That's being teachable. The more you enlarge your capacity, the more God can trust you. The more he'll pull in you. If you stay small, welcome to small. If you stretch, more. Amen. Your capacity can consist of how much can you handle. You can want something but not be ready for it. You can want something and don't have the capacity for it. And so when it don't happen, you wonder when me, when me, when God said enlarge your capacity. Why do I say that? Because I know her story. And that's her husband. Where's Jamie on there? Raise your hand. He back there. But the one up here, that one up here. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's another. Come here, Jamie. Harry. Come on, man. Come on, come on, man. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. And I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. But this is another one right here. That is a major product of discipleship. This is Antoinette's son, and this is Antoinette's daughter-in-law. But this one right here, for all y'all that talk about you can't stop smoking weed, right here. Right here. All because of discipleship. Mm -hmm. Now, if you got a green card or whatever card that is, then I ain't telling you. Maintenance man. Come on, Dwayne. Let me move quickly. Come on, maintenance man. Give God a hand for our maintenance man. Brother Dwayne, yes sir, I thank God for Dwayne. Dwayne has saved the church thousands, I'm being serious, thousands of thousands. This man, when you look at this man, you wouldn't think all this stuff in his bald head. This man got a lot of, <laughs> this man got a lot of wisdom, my God. And I want to encourage you, my God, he's gifted in a lot of areas. So when you think about different things at the house, my God, reach out to him. He got an email and so forth, my God. Uh, uh, he can save you a lot of money, but you're going to have to pay him. Let me tell you, can you do this? Hook a sister up, hook a sister up. Can you hook a brother up? Because he is gifted. He is gifted. But I thank God. If you want to help, my God, that's dealing with the different stuff around the ministry. My God, I promise you, my God, he runs a complex. He runs a complex, my God, right now. And he's responsible. He know a whole lot of stuff. He has fixed a whole lot of stuff. Just fixed it on GP. This man here also has been a major blessing, blessing, blessing to this ministry, especially this church right here at this PO 205 South Sheridan. So if you want to be a part of helping and you gifted, my God, and you got some time, you want to be a part of keeping stuff running around here and, and stuff in order to see Brother Dwayne, please, please, as he formulate his team. Oh my God, our media, my God, thank God for April and Jakari Jackson. Come on down. <laughs> J and A. I don't want to mess with it, but uh, I thank God you stayed because your boy has walked in. If you'd have walked out, you wouldn't be. <laughs> I 
I thank God for Jakari and April. They're media. Jakari runs all the online streaming and stuff like that. Can I say this in a moving church? Thank y'all for y'all patience, but I want y'all to understand what you got standing in front of you. My God, uh, with the people and the vision. The man of God runs the online streaming stuff. If you're gifted in that area, he needs some help. They got married and went quickly and went to a little honeymoon and came back and he right back working. He would love to be able to come into the ministry and sit down, man. If you're gifted, my God, before it's that media stuff and cameras and whatever it is that they do, uh, see the man of God and see the woman of God. Uh, we're looking forward to adding to the team so that they can be able to, anything that you do as leaders, you want to get to instead of have to. Anytime you have to, that means you're not producing yourself. We produce yourself. So you want to get to the point, if you're good with media, uh, if you want to be, if you want to be taught, I also see them too, my God. But uh, I'm thinking, God, we got a lot of help on the way coming from ORU next month, my God. Some of them gonna be involved with media and so forth. But I thank God for April Jakari. Can I tell you something? Not neither one of these persons that's standing up here receive a paycheck from going off of Christ Church. They volunteer. They volunteer. And so as God give the increase, we plant seed. But these people work, and they sacrifice. And thank God for you, because any time that we're able to give them something, you help give it to them, because you faithful givers in this ministry. So I thank y'all. I thank y'all. I thank y'all. This room I heard wore many hats, but right now she's over the outreach. But God is doing something in this room right here, and I'm seeing how it's materializing. A greater level, a greater level. I'm introducing her as the pastor of outreach, but God is doing something. I'm gonna set that right there. Yeah, I want y'all to think. Go pray and ask God to reveal something to you. But I thank God for this one right here. I thank God that my wife trusts this one right here. It's easy to do business with people when your helpmate likes them too. It is, ain't it, Pat? I thank God for Pastor Matt. Let's give God a hand for Pastor Matt. She too. Pastor, God, why did you bring me that church? Me and that man ain't got nothing in common. We come from two different worlds. Because she didn't need nothing traditional. She needed someone that was really free. To help her get really free. If you know her story, you will understand why I made that statement. Because you could be in church all of your life like many of you have. But how free are you for real? Discipleship would help you work on those areas that you're struggling with. But I thank God for this one right here, this next person. And she wore many hats. Uh, but she, we also have a jail ministry here at Going On for Christ Church. And they are very active in David L. Moss. And she has gracefully, gracefully asked, I mean, accepted, my God, to come up, my God, uh, on behalf of leadership. Because she knows we need some leadership in this area. Because I can't deal with all of it by myself. But so she has formulated a team. She knows who to talk to, who to communicate with. And so if you can clear a background check <laughs> and you want to get involved, my God, there's a requirements. If you want to get involved, my God, with jail and prison ministry and so forth, this is the person you need to see. But also before I say that, she also have a major program, my God, called Just the Beginning. Come on, put your hand up. So I'm going to ask, my God, I... Jail Ministry Coordinator, Minister Janice Jones, to come down. Mm -hmm. uh, that's who taught and trained Kendall. Just the beginning. She has some information for you. That's an extension of what we do here. I remember many years ago when we were serving at Greenwood together, I walked in the office and God told me, Janice, you going into jail ministry. She said, the devil is a liar. <laughs> she said, I don't like those people. Look at the mind, said Lawan. She said, I don't like those people. Because she didn't come from what a lot of us come out of. I don't like them people. She what you call, she'll tell you, self-righteous. 
I ain't got no, how can I, what you, this? she didn't know that God spoke to this young man, they didn't have no title, but God showed me what she was going to be doing. And the ministry that God called her to concerning just the beginning consists of her being actively involved in prison and jail ministry. The very people that she shunned. I don't want to know. Some of y'all stand up just to begin it. Come on, y'all stand up back there. Y'all stand up back there. They all back there. They all back there. Yes, Lord. And ain't even all of them. Amen. Amen. But she, another one, is making disciples through just the beginning. But if you want to inquire about our jail ministry, that is your contact person, not me. Each one of these persons, the department, that's who you go to. Don't go to me. Don't go to the wife. Don't stop us. My God, in the hallway, that says about anything concerning the department coordinators because uh, anything concerning the ministry, there you go. Any, any area you want to be in, there you go, right there, okay? Let me hear them get through. Porters, my God. Come on, Alvin Robeson. so handsome. See, that's what happened when you become a disciple. See, you step up every area. Your clothes change, everything change. How you see yourself, everything. A disciple, disciple makes, it affects every area of your life. But I thank God for him. I, I really do. First lady, always, she, she, yeah, we appreciate you are really growing, man. And I appreciate you. I appreciate the sacrifice because I can always count on you. If I can't get her, you can. Mm, I thank you, man. I love you, too. Amen. Praise and worship leaders, Kristen and Amber, come. <laughs> They're getting ready to, I think it's two weeks, they're getting ready to say I do. God gave, me a, God gave me a glimpse. Did y'all hear the sound today? Can y'all see the choir? Do y'all, you got to follow the work over her. I'm going to tell you, if you follow the work over her by the flesh, you'll get lost. This is a spiritual work. It's not a fleshly work. That's why it's painful. That's why God is doing what the woman of God said. Her tire came loose on the inside. Jesus said, first clean up the inside of the cup and then the outside shall be clean. See, we do, that's why it's painful because it's an inside work, work star and Brian, it's not an external. It's inside. And it's painful when God has started hitting that cavity on the inside. But I thank God for you too. Y'all been found faithful. And this last one uh, is, is, is a daughter of the house. And I thank God for another ministry that Minister Janice has sh- has delegated, no, 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 she has transitioned to Sister Kawista, which is talking and teaching. Come on, Kawista. And if you want to know more about talking and teaching, this is, it's a, uh, just go to the ministry for her. Let me move quickly. Now, right here, my last one, and I'm done. After this. Thank you for your time. Ain't none of them perfect. Neither is the one that's calling their name perfect. Neither is the one that gave her blessing for you to be her perfect. And neither are you. The Bible says when David, my God, became king, the people rejoiced. When promotion comes in God's kingdom, would the people rejoice or would they frown? My God. When your name is called and your number is called, when God says time and they put you before the people, what is they going to say about you? What is they going to think about you? You and I and everything behind me has an obligation to everything sitting out there. Yes, you lead us. Yes, you're not perfect. But there's certain things you don't get to. What have I taught you? There's certain things we don't get to do. There's certain things you don't get to do. You are responsible to God, me and Pastor Michelle, and this is what I heard that you're looking at. 
so you don't get to function like they function. You don't get to struggle with what they're struggling with. You got to get free because they need to be free. And their freedom is tied to you. Influence, reproduce, effect, advance, produce God's kingdom. That's what you're called to do. These are the departments of going home for Christ church. And I thank God for every last one of you. Now I'm going to bring up this last group of people and some of them was in this right here. My God. But let me say this before some of us begin to cast our vote. <laughs> oh my God. Going off of Christ and my wife and myself are always open to new leadership. Amen. I'm always looking to do better what God has already got us doing. God has brought many of you here to increase this here. Some of you sitting out there, I promise you, when Ronnie came here, he wasn't standing here. He was balled up in a bed struggling with alcohol addiction. But when he decided to come through Monday night discipleships, he'll tell you that's where he got his freedom at. Right. Not sitting in church. Yeah. So some of you that's sitting here, that's ready to cast a stone, and if you ain't, I ain't talking to you, but some of you that's sitting here is supposed to be here. This don't abort the process. God bought you here because the church needs you. There's people in this church that need you. They need your testimonies. They need what you bring. See what I'm trying to say? So don't disqualify yourself and don't tell yourself, uh, give me and my wife and this ministry what we need, which is you. Thank you, mama. She is my biggest fan. That's just Keisha, mama. Mm, mm, mm. Here is the grandfather trained my father, which is a lot of their grandfathers, as Pastor Madeline would say, I mean, Francella would say, God trained this next wave of people. I'm going to say Bishop Gary McIntosh took this people's name that I'm going to call through an extensive minister and training. And they have passed the test. Say it like that. And I'm going to give them, as well as my wife, an opportunity to grow in advance in the kingdom, naturally and spiritually. And so when I call your name, if you're already up here, if you're not up here, come down. These are people that went through training, the same training that I went through with my spiritual fathers, well as your niece and several of us, my God, that has the potential to function at major leadership inside of going off of Christ church. It's one thing to get a position, it's another thing to keep it. I and my wife do not determine who stay in leadership. I and my wife do not determine who comes to leadership. That's God's business. You can qualify or disqualify yourself because just because you start here don't mean you're going to end here if your life don't, don't keep you here. One thing about me, I am not afraid to make a decision. Even though I may be criticized and even though people may lie on me and talk about me, but if you are not handling your business, I can't correct anything that I don't know of. But if it's some willful disobedience going on, I'm coming for it. Because I'm bound by the king to make sure that I protect what he entrusted me and my wife to. And what they heard, they already know. I'm telling you. I can't correct. We can't correct what we don't know. But if I find out if there's anything, I'm not looking for nothing. Before you cast the first stone, make sure that same thing you cast the stone out ain't in your life. Don't come talk to me and my wife about something about her and you doing the same thing. Cornell Avery, come down. Amen. He's upstairs taking pictures. Patrice Avery and his wife, come down. <laughs> My little battle ram, come on down, Laquetta Gordon. Taylor Johnson, come on down. Yeah. Pastor Francetta, come on down. Yeah. Pastor Tedrick, come on down. Yeah. Minister Sheila, come on down. Yeah. Me and my wife's intercessor. Antoinette, come on down. Yeah. 
That's why God brought you to me because you misunderstood like me. But you have passed the test. If they knew your story, most of them would have tapped out, but you kept pushing. Come on down, Tanya. <laughs> uh, this one here, another product of discipleship. Come on, Krista. I'm done. The first wave that you seen was the department coordinators. They're over the departments of the ministry. If you want to get acquainted with any one of those departments you feel led to be a part of, please do so. This last wave that I called was people that was in ministers and training. They're set up under the spiritual father's covering. They're set up under his teaching and so forth. And so they had substance inside of them. Now we get to draw it out. I want to say this as I say this to y'all. Y'all first duty is unto the Lord. Then after that, it's unto me and Pastor Michelle. Then after that, it's to these people that y'all looking at. Everybody look at them. That's who y'all responsible to. After the hierarchy of God, me, first lady. That's who y'all responsible to. Don't hurt the sheep that God called me and Pastor Michelle to hurt the pastor. Love them like I do. I told y'all, my God, I've got out of balance, my God, at times because I gave my all and give my all to y'all to the point where it almost cost me my marriage. Out of balance. Thank God. You talking about being good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thank God for my baby. Amen. Who saw past all my faults like Jesus. <laughs> And so, my needs. But I want y'all to know something. Does I have y'all stand before the people of God? I trust you. Not because I want to, but because you earned it. But I'm not the one you need to be concerned about. That's who you need to be concerned about. You got to get their trust. And that comes through influence. That comes through connection. That comes through being men and women of your word. That comes with praying for the body. That comes with shoveling sheep down. Everybody, this is the leadership of going off for Christ Church. Give God a hand. <laughs> there will be an altar ministry being birthed, put back in place to deal with the people when they come to the altar. Thank you. <laughs> she needs no introduction. <laughs> My wife's armor bearer, Pastor Sharon. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Not Pastor Sharon, Sister Sharon. That's my wife's so armor bearer. And my secretary. Come. She needs no introduction. <laughs> Come on, stand with me. Let's pray. I know we used to go to the back in <laughs> Dirty Dives. When we be back in the back in the 80s, they had the, the house parties. She'd be standing, she put her hands on my head and be dancing. <laughs> Luan, y'all can't get nobody to say nothing about that. But I want y'all to know we are doing the best we can as pastors and as leaders. 
my God, to do the best we can. God is doing a great work inside of this ministry. Many lives are being touched. Many lives are being effective. Brother Jason, don't leave. I need to see you before you go, man of God. I want to catch you. I know you got to get to work, but uh, I need to see you. But are we doing the best we can? Ain't nobody up here perfect. Some of you, my God, eventually will make your way up here. I thank God before I be remiss, there's a lot of people that's connected to these people up here. Especially my hat goes off to the game time staff. <laughs> Star, LaDon, and all them, my God, and Shante, and all them, they're doing the best they can, my God. Uh, pray for game time, youth minister. It's not easy trying to raise these children. These kids are dealing with a whole lot of voices. I'm not just talking about our church. Our kids are dealing with a whole. When you drop your kid off or leave your, take your kid to school, I promise you, your kids are fighting a whole lot of different voices. You have no idea. My God. So we're going to pray, and I'm going to release you, and I need y'all to make sure y'all tell me or whoever got the best table. Okay? So, Father God, we thank you now. Lord, we're trying to do the best we can as pastors of this ministry. I just thank you for that which is standing behind and sitting behind me and my wife. Father God, I'm transparent, Father God, because I want them to be able to trust the God that lives on the inside of me, Lord. And we are doing the best we can to being led by your spirit, Father God. And Father God, you have blessed going home for Christ in six years. You have trusted us, Father God, with a campus that's over 51,000 square feet, Lord. And you have brought the people to this ministry to help us, Father God. Who, my God, grow and build your kingdom. It's also, Father God, to be able to serve this campus to the community, Father. Lord, I thank you for every one of these that's standing up here and everyone that's standing behind, sitting behind me, Father God. I pray your angelic, ha, your angelic, ha, your angelic hedge of protection to be placed around each and every one of us, Father God, as we join ourselves together as one family, one body, serving one Lord and one spirit, Father God. Father God, I plead the blood of Jesus, and I thank you that no weapon formed against this body as a whole shall be able to prosper. Father God, I thank you that you are getting us a prepared, Father God, for an explosion. As the prophet said, the time is now. Father God, you have postured this, this ministry, you have positioned this ministry, Father God, to receive the increase of the people that's coming, Father God. People all around the world are hurting, they're desperate, Father God, for the realness, Father God, and so you will be bringing them here. Lord, so I pray that you help us get healthy in every area of our lives, Father God so that we can be effective in handling your people. Our heart is to help your people. Our heart is to do your will. Our heart is to make disciples, Father God. I don't want to do anything else, Father God, but do what you told the church to do, and that is to go into the world and make disciples, Father God. And when my time is up, Father God, the next pastor can do whatever they feel led to do, Lord. But while I'm here, Lord, I'm going to make disciples, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, that you have trusted me and my wife. Oh, my God, to stand. Oh, my God, we've been tested and we've been tried, Father God. The enemy tried, but he lost, Father God. So, Lord, we thank you, Father God, for unity. We thank you for togetherness. We thank you that this body, Father God, is walking together. Your word decrees. How can two people walk together except to be agreement? So, I thank you for the power of agreement in this church, Father God. And I bind every witch. I bind every warlock. And I bind every demon that will try to rise up against this work over here, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we will release and we will go out and reproduce ourselves, Father God, and affect the world, Father God, for the kingdom. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Come on, give God a hand, everybody. Oh my God. Come on, shout to the Lord for me. Come on and shout to the Lord for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.